in the book of John, chapter number one, verses 10 through 17. I'll read it in two different versions. The King James Version and the uh, New Living Translation. That's John chapter 1, verses 10 through 17. And it says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's John chapter 1, verses 10 through 17. Now we'll read it in the New uh, Living Translation, or the NLT. He came into the very world he created. But the world did not recognize him, or didn't recognize him. He came to his own people. And even they rejected him. But to all, to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become the children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, this is the one I was talking about when I said, someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. From his abundance, we, all, we have all received one glorious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. 
The message is God's amazing grace. But don't take God's grace for granted. Let me say that again. The message is God's amazing grace. But don't take God's grace for granted. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, do we now humble ourselves once again in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Lord, we come to you now by faith, knowing that without faith it's impossible to please God. But Jesus, we come to you now because we love you, we appreciate you, and we adore you. We come to honor and to reverence who you are, what you are, and where you are. But surely you are the true vine, and we are the branches, except we abide in you, and you abide in us, we can do nothing without you. And we refuse to try to do anything without you. As we began to bring forth your word this very hour, we pray now that you bless us with a special anointing, that we may preach this word under the unction of the Holy Ghost, and that we may preach it according to your perfect will. In fact, Lord Jesus, we pray that you speak to us this very hour and that you speak through us that you open up our hearts that we may receive the word of God with joy and with gladness. Let your word be hidden in our hearts and planted in our souls. And let us not just be hearers of thine word, but be ye also doers of thine word. This hour bind all distractions. Bind every demon on the north side, on the south side, on the east and the west of this message. Speak to your people clearly and openly, O Lord. Let them hear what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Amen. The message is God's grace, God's amazing grace, but don't take God's grace for granted. Once again, the message is God's amazing grace. But don't take God's grace for granted. As I was praying, and seeking direction for this message. I was being led to give the message for the saints as a word of encouragement, a word of exhortation, and a word that would be the building up of the saints or the building up of the saints. In the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 32, it says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. I read so many, so many, so many beautiful things about this amazing grace that I became completely humbled, completely thankful. 
I became closer to God. And I desired more than anything to please Jesus Christ in all that I do. What's so awesome about this grace is that it's for everyone who desires it in sincerity. I found out that the word grace was used 37 times in the Old Testament and 122 times in the New Testament. Noah was the first person in the Old Testament to find grace in God's sight. Hallelujah. And eight souls were saved and a new race of people were on their way called the Israelites. Hallelujah. The word grace was used in many ways in the Old Testament. Esther found grace in the sight of the king. Ruth found grace in the sight of Boaz. So grace was found in the sight of God. And it was found in the sight of one another. Hallelujah or as we deal with one another. Grace cannot be earned. It cannot be bought. It cannot be stolen. And you can't even deserve it. Grace is just a gift freely given from the giver out of pure love. And it must be received freely without anything owed to the giver. Just enjoy this thing called grace. Appreciate this amazing grace. And cherish this gift of grace given out of pure Love, hallelujah. It doesn't cost the person who, who's receiving this grace. It don't cost them anything. But it does cost the person that's given this amazing grace. Jesus saw the fall of mankind. He loved mankind with an everlasting love. He was hurt by mankind. And he knew that they were in trouble. Hallelujah. Mankind was created perfectly. They were created in God's image. Hallelujah. It was no fault in mankind or nothing wrong with mankind when he was created. They were not sinners. Hallelujah. They had never sinned before. They did what was right in God's sight. They had a free will. Hallelujah. To love God or not, to serve God or not, to obey God or not, or even to believe God or not. They had choice. Hallelujah. They had an awesome relationship with the almighty God. Hallelujah. They would meet with God in the cool of the day. They had a strong relationship with God. Adam would talk to God and God would talk to him. God gave mankind dominion upon everything that he had created. 
He even told Adam, I want you to just name everything that I have created. All of the animals, hallelujah, all of the fishes of the sea. Name everything that I have created. I want you to cultivate the land. I want you to take care of it, hallelujah. Adam was excited about his relationship with God. He would meet God in the cool of the day. He was excited. They would talk to one another. Hallelujah. So God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. So he created a woman, Eve. And they was in love. Hallelujah. Pure love, not love that is based off of things. It wasn't that superficial love like a Valentine's Day or a birthday or Christmas time. It was just pure love and they operated with loving kindness. They drew one another with loving kindness like God draws us. With loving kindness have I drawn you. And we, they built up one another. Hallelujah. It wasn't based off of how good you look. It wasn't based off of how you made them feel. It was pure, unconditional agape love. Hallelujah. I just love you because of who you are. You are God's creation. Hallelujah. You are his masterpiece. Hallelujah. And you have been created in his image. You have the characteristics of God. Hallelujah. You walk like God. You talk like him. You're, uh, you're, there's no lying and uh, no uh, flattery that was among them. Hallelujah. It was just pure love and grace was given to one another. Free gifts. I just did this because I love you, hallelujah, unconditionally, hallelujah. And so sin entered this thing in the garden, hallelujah. And sin became, came between God and man, hallelujah. It messed up the relationship that God had with mankind. If you ever read it again, when God kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden, hallelujah, they lived 800 more years, 800 and something more years. And they had to see the decline of mankind. What their sin had caused in the earth. They saw their son murder his brother. Hallelujah. It was because of sin. It brought forth hatred and envy, strife. The knowledge of good and evil. Glory, hallelujah. So mankind kept going down and down. All types of sin till God said, I repented that I made man. He regretted that he made man. Hallelujah. So you get down to the sixth and the seventh chapter of Genesis. And Noah found grace. In the sight of God. Hallelujah. And out of all of the people on the earth. Hallelujah. Only eight souls were saved. By this grace. That God had for Noah. Hallelujah. And Jesus. Always had. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Always had for a love for mankind. He, he always extended his grace to mankind. 
And so man was in trouble. Hallelujah. And judgment was coming on mankind for the wages of sin is death. Sin always brings about a death to something in our lives. Hallelujah. It could be the death of a marriage. It could be the death of uh, 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 murder. Sin just brings death all around it. Hallelujah. You can die spiritually if you continue to sin willfully. Before God, hallelujah. Sin just brings forth death. Mm. Hallelujah. It is not discriminative. And it affects everybody around us. Hallelujah. And so God was going to judge mankind. Hallelujah. And so he got mad. At mankind. And Jesus loved mankind. Hallelujah. Jesus, which is God, hallelujah, in the flesh. Mm. He loved mankind till he came off his throne. Hallelujah. He was king of kings before he even got there. Hallelujah. He was creator of all things, for the Bible said he created all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they were made for him. And so he said, look, I want my relationship back with mankind. So God was in Christ reconciling the world back unto himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wanted that relationship. Mm. But it got to cost him something. Glory, hallelujah. So Jesus said, I'll go and I'll save mankind from their sins. And then I'll restore them back into fellowship with God. Hallelujah. I would do this as a gift, a free gift called grace. That's God's amazing grace. Hallelujah. This grace is used in many different forms according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. You got to read about this amazing grace. Hallelujah. It is absolutely amazing. Hallelujah. No wonder the theme, oh glory, is God's amazing grace, hallelujah. Or the message is God's amazing grace, hallelujah. But don't take this grace for granted, hallelujah. Mm, glory, I found many things that comes with this gift called grace, hallelujah. Grace and truth came only by Jesus Christ, mm. Jesus' blood had to be shed for this grace. It was a price that had to be paid. And it had to be a blood sacrifice. Hallelujah. He said he could not find anyone that can do this thing. So he did it for himself. Hallelujah. By himself. Hallelujah. This grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Had to have some bloodshed. That's why he said you are bought with a price. Hallelujah. And the price was the shedding of blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And this grace comes with salvation. Mm. Our salvation is based off of this grace. Hallelujah. Our strength comes from this thing called grace. We are led to this gift of grace. Hallelujah. This great grace was upon this 
these apostles. We are to grow in grace. Hallelujah. We saw and we experienced the grace of God. Hallelujah. The gifts of the Spirit are given by this amazing grace. There's a gospel called grace. Hallelujah. The word of his grace builds us up. Hallelujah. It is so much more to this gift of grace that you got to study it for yourself. Hallelujah. This grace should motivate us. Hallelujah. It should encourage us. It should keep us on the righteous path to eternal life. This grace should help us to trust in Jesus Christ in everything. This grace should cause us to love him more than anything and everything. Hallelujah. Nothing should come between us and God's amazing grace. We should cherish this amazing grace. We shall hold on to it with their life. Hallelujah. We should guard this amazing grace. We should share this amazing grace. We should give this gift of grace to others. Hallelujah. We should let them know about this amazing grace. Hallelujah. We should tell everybody about this amazing grace. Hallelujah. We should talk about it all the time. We should give thanks over and over for this amazing grace. Mm. It's big enough for everyone to have it. Oh, glory be to God. It's yours if you want it. Hallelujah. It is the free gift of grace that is given by God to mankind. Hallelujah. God gets offended when we take this grace for granted. Hallelujah. You can't. Just do anything you want because of grace. Hallelujah. In the sixth chapter of the book of Romans, verse 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 6 verse 15. Just skip down to the 15th verse. He says, what then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. Again, he said, God forbid. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1. He says, don't take the grace of God in vain. Hallelujah. He talks about this grace and he warns us about the grace. He warns us not to think we can do anything we want just because of this free gift of grace. I hear many quote. That we are saved by grace, not of works. Oh, no, no. Yeah, we saved by the grace of God. But you can't sin and do what you want with it. Hallelujah. You play around with grace, it'll run out of you. Hallelujah. Mercy will run out. Everybody gets a, just a measure of it. We don't know when it is going to run out. So don't get caught with your works undone. Hallelujah. Mm. In Titus chapter 2 verses 11 through 15. And this is sound doctrine. Hallelujah. He talks about this grace 
again. Hallelujah. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Hallelujah. Teaching us that the grace of God is teaching us now. Take note that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the, uh, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous for good works. Hallelujah. These things speak and exhort, encourage, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Hallelujah. I think I better read that again. This is what the grace of God teaches us. That's Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. The next time somebody tried to justify their sins, take them to Titus Chapter 11, chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. For it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Everybody knows about the grace of God. Glory, hallelujah. Now it's teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, sins, transgressions, and iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people. That's a special people. Zealous for good works. So grace want us to be zealous for good works. He said, these things I need you to speak, preach it, teach it, and encourage it, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise you. Tell them the truth about grace. Don't take God's grace for granted. Hallelujah. And Jude chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. He says, I say this because some ungodly people have warmed their way into your churches. Hallelujah. Saying God's marvelous grace allows us to live in moral lives. Hallelujah. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago. Hallelujah. For they have denied the only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. So I wanted to remind you, hallelujah, Though you already know these things, hallelujah, that Jesus first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt. But later, he destroyed those 
who did not remain faithful. Hallelujah. I think I better read that again also. Hallelujah. God is speaking to us about his grace. He talked about how amazing it is. And it is a gift from God. It's a free gift. Hallelujah. It comes with a price. It comes with the shedding of blood. But don't take God's grace for granted. Let me read Jude again. Verse, uh, chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. I say this because some ungodly people have creeped into the church unawares. They snuck in. They act like us. They dress like us. They run, jump, and shout like us. They preach and teach like us. But they don't live like us. Hallelujah. They don't walk like us. Hallelujah. He's saying that God's marvelous grace has allowed us. This is what they say in glory. Mm. That God's marvelous grace, hallelujah, allows us to live immoral lives. Hallelujah. Turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. It's that that we can do what we want. We're saved by grace. Hallelujah. We can sin and transgress God's laws. We can disobey God's commandments. That's what they're saying. And God will cover us with his grace. Don't take God's grace for granted. Hallelujah. Grace will run out on you. Hallelujah. Grace and mercy can run out on you. Hallelujah. If you abuse God's amazing grace. Hallelujah. He said the condemnation of such people was recorded long ago. He given us an example of the Israelites that took God's grace for granted. Hallelujah. For they have denied the only master in the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you deny Jesus? You speak words of Jesus with your mouth, but your heart is far from him, O oh glory. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Hallelujah. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Hallelujah. How did I mess up with Jesus Christ? And he kept on talking in Jude. So I want you, I want to remind you of this. Something, something that happened long ago. Listen carefully. He said, though you already know these things, you read about them in the book of Numbers chapter 13 and 14. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. That Jesus first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt. Hallelujah. But later, he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. Hallelujah. Something about this amazing grace. It is the free gift of God. Hallelujah. And it's a gift to those that don't deserve it. Hallelujah. And yet they want to 
please God. Hallelujah. They do everything to strive for perfection. For Hebrews chapter 6 said, let us go on to perfection. And somewhere in the scriptures, Jesus said, be ye perfect for I am perfect. He talks about this grace Paul and the apostles talked about it. Hallelujah. This grace is amazing. Oh, glory be to God. Read about it. Oh, glory. It'll give you something that excites you. But it don't make you live ungodly lives. Hallelujah. Grace don't make you want to sin against God. It breaks God's heart when we sin against him. It messes him up when you turn your back on him, when you backslide. He's saying you chose this over my amazing grace. When you look at it, that's how he looks at it. You mean to tell me you chose this? Over God's amazing grace. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I hear you speaking Jesus. Don't take God's grace for granted. Hallelujah. He wants you to have this gift. I got so much more for you. Plenty of gifts of grace. Hallelujah. I got grace to, to help you make it. Hallelujah. I got grace for you to overcome the temptations of the vic, uh, king, uh, over the temptations of the uh, devil. Hallelujah. I got grace when you're going through trials and tribulations. I got grace when you're going through sickness and disease. I got more grace when you're uh, glory ready to give up. Hallelujah. I got grace when everybody turns their backs upon you. I got more grace and more grace and more grace for you. It is the gift of God. Hallelujah. And it's amazing. It is the unmerited favor, the undeserved blessing of God that have been bestowed upon you. I got grace when you fail, when you stumble. Just come in and confess it and forsake it. I got more grace for you. Hallelujah. I overwhelmed you with grace and goodness and mercy. I gave you everything you needed and wanted. I gave it to you more abundantly. I gave you grace to make it through life. I gave you grace to make it to eternity. Grace everywhere. Grace, grace, grace. Just look around you. Grace is all over you. Hallelujah. Grace, grace, grace is on top of you. What more do you want? Hallelujah. Grace is everywhere for you. Mm. But don't take my grace for granted. Hallelujah. Please don't do that. I gave you examples after example. Remember Ananias and Sapphira in the fifth chapter of the book of Acts? They took my grace for granted. They lied to the Holy Ghost. Remember them down in Romans chapter 1. They, they took the grace of God for granted. Hallelujah. Remember them in Revelation, the seven churches. They left their first love. They were lukewarm. They committed fornications, adulteries with Jezebel. They worshiped other idols. So much grace. Don't take it for granted. Hallelujah. Remember the 10th chapter of Hebrews. Read it for yourself. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Don't take this grace for granted. If you keep on sinning willfully, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin 
For you read it in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. I mean, the book of Hebrews. Yes, read about this grace. Don't take it for granted. Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. God forbid. Don't take the grace of God in vain. In Jesus' name, amen.